the one lie you've been told in order to achieve success in your home business, your social retail business, your direct sales business, your MLM business, network marketing business, whatever you wanna call it, the one lie, but also the secret to success. Obviously, I could go on and on with all the different things that you need to do in order to achieve success, right? I could talk about mindset and uh, personal development and working on you. If you want to grow your bank account, you got to grow yourself first, right? I could talk about uh, branding yourself, attraction marketing, using social media, which is what I'm doing right now, right? Creating content. There's a lot of different things, but here's the real secret to success. And this is... Uh, a little bit of an issue, in my opinion, in the profession, is that because there's social media and because there's an overwhelming amount of opinions and experts and there's so many different strategies now, I think there's a lot of people out there trying to avoid the real work because this is the true secret to success. And I'm gonna get into it, but before I do, I also wanna talk about the one lie. And it's the lie that you need to be confident. Now, does it help if you have posture and you have confidence? Of course it helps. Of course it's helpful, but you don't need it to be successful. In fact, I got started 20 years ago. For many of you that follow me, you know that I got started when I was 20 years old. I was broke, busted, and disgusted. No background in business. No business being in business. They said you could be from Yale or jail. And I was like, hey, I've been in jail. So I can be successful. This is amazing. And I had a mentor and there was a system in place and there was coaching. And, you know, they helped me get over my BS excuses. They would always say you can make money or make ex excuses. You can't do both. Choose wisely. But I didn't have any confidence, but I knew I didn't want to continue down the path I was on. I knew I didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I knew I didn't want to have more month than money. How many of us can relate? I knew I didn't want to feel like a loser. I didn't want to, you know, I was a community college dropout. So, you know, everybody was telling me you need to go to school, get a job, get a degree, you know, work for someone else. And I was like, I hate school. And I don't like the idea of having like, you know, drive in rush hour traffic twice a day for the rest of my life and, you know, barely make ends meet. Like, I didn't like that concept. I wasn't into it. Not at all. I wanted financial freedom. I wanted time freedom. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to make millions of dollars. All of that sounded way more appealing to me. But of course, I had no background. I had never been in business before. My parents just had jobs. Everybody I knew was either, they either had a job or they wanted a job. They were going to school to get a degree to get a job. Like I didn't know entrepreneurial minded people. I didn't know, I couldn't even spell entrepreneur. I had no idea that I could get into business for myself. I could, you know, do something outside the box. So when I saw network marketing, I, yeah, hook, line and sinker, like, I was a red apple. You know, they talk about the apples. You got the red apples, the green apples, and the rotten apples. Uh, I was definitely a red apple. I saw it. I thought, this is awesome. This is a no-brainer. And then, of course, I thought everybody else was going to want to do it. Now, I wasn't confident, but I was ignorance on fire, which is better than knowledge on ice. And I was out there. I was just talking to people, talking to people, talking to people. And, you know, this happens to all of us. Over time, you actually you lose some confidence. Now, I know that sounds funny, but you do. Now, I'm not talking about years later. I'm talking about within a matter of months. And here's what I mean. You start to look at the last 90 days and you're like, oh my gosh, like so much rejection. So many people say they're gonna buy and they say they're gonna join and they don't. And you start to second guess things. You're like signing people up and then they're quitting. At least this was my experience. I can't say that everybody's gonna have the same experience as me, but how many of us, it's like you sign someone up and they end up in like witness protection. It's like the aliens abducted them. You're like, what happened to Frank? Frank was so excited. Frank said he knew everybody. But then come to find out, nobody knows Frank, right? Come to find out, Frank is a little bit of a wuss, right? Come to find out, Frank's making excuses. Frank Frank doesn't want to admit that he's quit before he's even gotten started. I love when people say, you know, I've decided to quit. And I'm like, quit? You never, You never really got started, right? The point is, Way back when, 20 years ago, uh, I actually lost some confidence. I lost my enthusiasm a little bit. Why? Because I, I was getting a lot of rejection. And then the people I was signing up, they were quitting. And I was, I was getting frustrated because, of course, I was excited, but I wasn't seeing the results. I was getting discouraged. How many of us have ever been there? 
be honest, how many of us get discouraged? And, you know, I would go to these events and I would talk to my mentors and they'd be like, you got to think long-term, think long-term, think long-term. But it was so hard to think long-term because in the short term, I couldn't pay my bills, right? I was living at home with my parents. I was waiting tables on the weekends, you know, and people see us today and they see us, you know, living the dream, traveling the world. You know, they, they see us buying beach houses and, and going to our son's baseball tournaments and having all this freedom and, you know, financial success. And, you know, our business has been growing every year the last six years, but y'all didn't see us in our losing season, right? You didn't see the sacrifice. You didn't see, you know, all the, the, the pain and suffering because, you know, you go to these events and you see these other people having success. You're like, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? Now, the truth is, we were also in the wrong vehicle. There were, there were a, a plethora of reasons why we were struggling, but the whole, like, you got to have confidence, I, you know, I just don't believe that. I love the Brene Brown quote. If you follow me, you know I share this quote all the time. Choose courage over comfort, right? It's uncomfortable to get rejected. It's uncomfortable to invest money into something. It's uncomfortable to do something against the grain or do something that everybody else is telling you it's a bad idea, which is funny because in today's you know, financial climate, all these things are happening, but guess what? Network marketing? Having a home business, especially if you're in the right vehicle, a company you really believe in, which by the way, that comes with time. Sometimes when you're brand new, again, it's better to be ignorance on fire than knowledge on ice. You might not have all the knowledge. You might not have all the insight, but I truly believe there's a lot of network marketing home-based businesses out there that are completely recession-proof, completely recession-proof. In fact, oftentimes, you know when I fired my boss and went full-time in this profession? 2008, when there was a big crash when there was, you know, all this uncertainty in the market. Uncertainty breeds opportunity. People are more open when things are uncertain, when, when times are tough, when they see things going backwards, their, their income is dropping, uh, their stress is increasing, right? Like people become more open. But again, you don't need confidence. You don't need confidence. That is just not true. You'll build up your confidence. You'll build it up brick by brick. Just like you're building your business, you'll build it brick by brick. So you have to think like that. And that's what kept me on track. That's what kept me going when I started to lose my confidence. And, and this is the secret. And some of you don't want to hear this, but it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And, and this is what I was talking about in the beginning. People get so into like branding themselves and creating curiosity and using social media to generate leads and sales and create curiosity so that people are coming to them all the time. And believe me, that is exciting. I love when someone's in my inbox, like, what company are you with? What do you do? You know, I'm looking for a new home. I'm looking to get back into network marketing. I'm curious about your products. I'm, I love when people reach out. How many of us smash the hard button? Obviously, when you have someone in your inbox requesting information, number one, it's always exciting. But number two, my close ratio is a little bit better. It's a little bit better when someone reaches out to me versus me reaching out to them. But with that being said, it's a numbers game. And some of you are avoiding the hard work. You know how you build up confidence? You know how you build up that rhinoceros skin where like, <laughs> like nothing bothers you? Like I've had top earners on my team get terminated or I've been sued by my former company. I've had a company shut down by the FTC. I've had all kinds of things happen to me. And obviously you never love, you're never like, oh yes, I love getting sued. Or yes, I'm so glad my income got taken away in the snap of a finger, right? Nobody's ever excited when something bad happens, but through the rejection, through the disappointment, you build up your confidence, you build up your skills, you build up your ability to honestly go through anything go through anything, grow through anything. You actually become a better leader when you experience adversity. See, it's easy to be positive when your business is blowing up, when things are going well, but a true leader, a real leader is stepping up when things get tough, right? They double down during the summer. As an example, people say, oh, the summer months are slow. Well, that means you got to work twice as hard. That means you need to be twice as focused, right? It's the people that work through the summer that reap the harvest in the fall. It's the people that double down right now because of what's going on in the world, like I just mentioned, that are going to reap the benefits, right? People are like, John, how do you keep recruiting? Like I've recruited more people in the last 90 days than I have in 20 years. Why? Because I'm still doing what I'm telling you to do. I'm still building those relationships, putting out the content. But again, the real secret, it's a numbers game. It is a numbers game. 
I am only where I am because I have had more conversations about my products and opportunity than you have. I've gotten more rejection than you have. I've done more videos than you have. I've invested more money into my business and into my self-education than you have. I've been doing this longer. In fact, do you know how many people back in the day were way ahead of us and we felt like, I'm just being honest with you guys, I remember sitting in those seats being like, I can never talk like those people on stage. I can never be that confident. I can never carry myself. I was nervous for the people on stage. Like that's how afraid of public speaking I was. I was literally nervous for them, <laughs> right? I was like stressed out for them on their behalf. But one of the things I learned early on is that you can borrow the confidence from your upline. Sometimes it's not talked about enough on the importance of your upline, your mentor, the people you get to work with. And you might say, well, John, my upline sucks. Well, listen, if your sponsor is your, your upline who you're referring to and they suck, great, find out who is their upline, who's their upline. Like there's always someone up there that cares about your success, typically. Unless you're like direct to the company, right? But then you got the company, go to the owner. Like I borrowed the confidence from my upline. I borrowed the confidence from the people on stage. Because when I wasn't confident, when I didn't have certainty, when I didn't know what to do every day, when I didn't have the, the, the belief in myself, I borrowed their belief. So it's a lie that you need to be confident. You don't need to be confident. Now, again, does it help that eventually you're more confident and you have more certainty and more belief? Of course, obviously, but you don't need it to be successful, especially in the early days because you have your mentors, you have your upline, you have your support system. Like the best thing you can do is get yourself out of the way. Don't be a fool, use a tool. Now a tool could be a video, but also a tool could be your upline. So like the sooner you get your prospects into a chat, into a messenger chat on Facebook Messenger with your upline, the sooner you start to make money and you get to earn while you learn and you get to leverage their expertise. You get to leverage their confidence their knowledge. You get to leverage them and their success and their success story and their testimonial and all the things, right? So think about that. Think about if you started a traditional business, let's say you started a restaurant and you needed help, who are you talking to? You're going to go reach out to the competitors out there that have their own seafood restaurant and say, hey, I want to be like your seafood restaurant. Teach me how to compete with you. Teach me how to get some of the customers that typically would go to your seafood restaurant and they're going to come to my seafood. Like, no, they would never teach the competition. We're here. We're in business with you. You have an upline. They're partnered with you. They want you to succeed. They want to help you grow a customer base. You couldn't pay me enough money. You could not hire me. I am way out of your price range. Does that make sense? Like you couldn't hire me to help you grow your traditional business in that, in that sense with that analogy. But here in a business like this, you have your upline support team that will do it for free. Now, obviously they're not really doing it for free because we all get paid. We work together. Our whole goal is to help you make money. But the point is it's invaluable. So you don't need the confidence. You can borrow your upline's confidence, borrow your upline story, borrow your upline. In fact, you're not just borrowing their story, or their confidence. You're literally putting them in chats so you can earn while you learn. Like I had this one person say like, oh, I really need help. I need guidance. I need direction. And I'm like, great. How many people did you talk to this week? How many people did you ATM this week? How many people did you put in chats with your upline this week? Well, none. Well, what do you, what do you need coaching on exactly? Like, what do you need direction on? Like, if you're not doing the thing that I just told you, you need to do, right? I just told all of you, right? The secret to success is it's a numbers game. Go for no, right? Talk to more humans. Like, it's amazing how basic this is, but so many people want to avoid rejection. They want to avoid being judged. They want to avoid selling. Like, if you're not selling your product, you don't believe in your product, you're being selfish. Like, why would I keep my products a secret? Now, I might keep the name of the company a secret until people, until I'm into a conversation with someone so I can control the conversation, right? So if I'm promoting my, my liquid collagen, it's the number one collagen in the world, seven international patents. You know, we're, we've got world-class collagen. We're the leader in the collagen market. It's ridiculous. It's amazing. The benefits for hair, nail, skin, like joints. It's incredible. It's phenomenal. It's insane. It's like one of the best products on the planet. I'm so grateful for that product line. Why would I keep it a secret? Why would I keep it a secret? You're a secret agent? Like you, oh, I don't want to get rejected. Or I, I, don't, I don't know what to say to people. I don't want to cold message people. Well, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. You don't want to cold message people? How many Facebook friends do you have? Oh, I got 700 Facebook friends, John. Okay, cool. So 
Have you reached out to any of them? Why well, don't I want a cold message? Whoa, 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 whoa. What is your definition of a cold message? A cold message is messaging someone that you don't know that doesn't know you exist. You have 700 Facebook friends. Why would I be friends with someone on Facebook if I can't talk to them? Why would I be friends with someone on Facebook? And even if it's like not a real friend, but it's a Facebook friend, if I can't talk to them about my products or opportunity, then why would I be friends with them? To me, that doesn't make sense. So some of you have to get over your own fears and doubts and your insecurities and you're, you're, you're so, again, worried about coming across as having commission breath. And now listen, we talk a lot about not having commission breath, but there's a way to do it with it not coming across that way. So if I reach out to Tammy, hey, Tammy, what's up? It's been a while. I would love to catch up. And then I just wait. I wait for Tammy to respond. Hey, I saw you uh, were recently in Disney World or, hey, I, I was just thinking about you or, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm up to something new and I would love to run it by you when you have a couple minutes. But the point is, I want to be very clear. I'm sending out audio clips, maybe five a day. I would make a goal just to send out five messages a day to connect or reconnect with friends. OK, now when I say connect or reconnect, you have some people you're friends with you've never talked to. Why? Makes no sense. You're an entrepreneur. You're building a business. You're connected to people, but you don't talk to those people. Makes no sense. I reach out to new friend requests, followers, existing friends all the time. Still today, 20 years in, I still reach out to people, believe it or not. Now, I might be a little more selective because I'm busier these days, but I'm reaching out to people all the time. Now, when Tammy responds, hey, Tammy, great to hear from you. Would love to catch up. But listen, I'm doing something new. I'm really excited. I'm partnered up with this company. They're always looking for amazing people to represent the brand to represent these products. If you're at all open, I would love to share a short video with you. I would love to plug you into this, this online community that I'm a part of. If you're open, if not, no big deal. I'm doing this because, I'm doing this because of the gas prices, inflation, all the things, and I just thought it was smart to have multiple streams of income. Write this down. Whenever you're reaching out to people, obviously you wanna be excited. Some people say, John, I am excited. Tell your face, <laughs> right? Tell your face, but, when you're reaching out to people, you want to be excited. You want to cut to the chase, get to the point. You also want to tell them why you're excited. It doesn't have to be a why that makes you cry, but stop avoiding reaching out to people. If you're not reaching out to five to 10 people a day, you're going to get smoked. And what I mean by that is you're going to get left behind. There's going to be people that join a month from now, two months from now, six months from now, a year from now. And because their ignorance on fire, they don't have confidence. I don't know what the hell they're doing, right? They're like faking it till they make it. But because they're proactively in people's inboxes, they're going to end up recruiting some of the people that you know. They're going to end up selling products to some of the people you know. In fact, check this out. Some of you have sold products to people and you haven't told them about your business. I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I I've signed up people that were other people's prospects. Yeah, I have. I have signed up other people's uh, customers as distributors on my team. Now, let's be clear, I'm not stealing people, but what I'm saying is I've had people say, yeah, I've talked to this person and that person, but you know, it's been a few years. In fact, they quit and they went somewhere else. In fact, I bought from someone I've never talked to and I've never heard from them, so I don't even know them. So I'd rather buy from you and your wife. I'd rather work with you and Nadia. I'd rather be a part of your team because... I've sent five messages to this person. They don't respond to me. I haven't heard from them. I'm not ever encouraging you to go after other people's people. In fact, I always try to send people back to where they came from. But the truth is, if someone talked to someone three years ago and they're not even in the company anymore and they're not connected to that person anymore and they were only a customer, but now the timing is different and they see us show up every day, people can pick and choose who they want to work with. And you know who they want to work with? People that give them hope people that have results or they're working with people that have results. So you might say, well, John, I don't have results. Yeah, but your upline does. That's why you got to get yourself out of the way. The sooner you get yourself out of the way, the sooner you make money and stop avoiding rejection. Stop with this whole like, oh, I'm just going to do reels and TikToks and sit back and wait for people to get in my inbox. Listen, I love curiosity marketing. I just told you, but I am telling you this also. We proactively reach out to people. And when I say we, check this out. Uh, Kyle hits me up because our Facebook reels have like gone from like blowing up to like not blowing up at all. Like literally having, you know, a thousand new followers a week or two. I don't know how many it was. Like in the beginning, it was insane. But of course, 
Now there's more people doing Facebook Reels. There's more competition. Facebook Reels has definitely kind of changed up a little bit with what they're they're putting out there, which is fine because check this out. Not only do I still have a lot of unread messages in my filtered folder that Kyle responds to, but Kyle, uh, he's one of our, our, our Filipino virtual assistants. He's amazing. He's a beast. He's on top of it. He's like, John, I got an idea. Why don't I reach out to all those people that commented on your Reels you know, earlier this year and last year that never sent a message and I'll just reach out to all of them. I'm like, Kyle, I love that idea. Let's go. The point is he's being proactive, right? Now you might say, well, I need, I need a Kyle. Yes, you do. You should all be hiring a VA. You should absolutely hire a VA. If you don't hire a VA, like you must hate money. You must hate like leverage. I don't know. But um, some of you are maybe just getting started. So you probably don't need a VA just yet. But once you start creating momentum, you start building up a business, building up a brand, building up a following, building up a customer base, you will want a VA, 100%. We've got multiple. They're amazing. I don't know what I would do without Ben, Desi, Kyle, and some of our other amazing uh, VAs and contractors and people that work with us. But at the end of the day, you got to start somewhere and you should start with your existing friends, your existing followers. How about the people that are watching your stories? How about the people that like your posts? They comment on your content. Why are you not reaching out to them? Well, they didn't ask me about my business. What? You're waiting for them? Just don't hold your breath. <laughs> don't hold your breath. Like there are people that I've reached out to over the years. It could be me wishing them a happy birthday. Hey, thanks for the follow. Thanks for the friend request. Hey, it's been a while. Hey, I saw you're online right now. What's going on? Like just reaching out to people and they'll be like, you know what? I've been meaning to ask you. And it might be about my ATM Business Academy. It might be, hey, I've been meaning to ask you, do you have a coaching program? Hey, I've been meaning to ask you. I'm curious about, you know, renting one of your beach houses and doing a team retreat. Or it could be, hey, I'm interested in your collagen. I'm interested in that trim supplement. Or I'm interested in, you know, uh, making money online. I'm just curious, what do you and Nadia do? Because I was proactive, I was reaching out, and I'm not afraid of humans. Why are you afraid of people? The sooner you get over your fear and your excuses, the sooner you will see success. You are your own worst enemy. I'm shy. Okay, get over it. And here's the thing. Being shy is awesome. For social media, you can be shy. You don't have to be a super outgoing person to reach out. There are a lot of very shy people, introverted people. I know some of you love, you love claiming that I'm an introvert. I am shy. Super. So you should show people that if you can do it, they can do it. In fact, that should be your motivation, not your excuse. That should be your reason to go make this thing happen because if you can go out and show people that an introvert can do it, that a shy person can do it, then that gives people hope. And like I said before, people want to partner with people that give them hope, that inspire them.